oh God, in the name of Jesus, every yoke, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that's stopping us from crossing over, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, hallelujah, Jesus, for it's your anointing, oh God, that will tear down every wall, oh God, for it's your anointing, oh God, that will tear down every giant, oh God, for it's your anointing, oh God, will break every chain, oh God, for it's your anointing, oh God, that will destroy the yoke of bondage, oh God, in the name of Jesus. No longer will we be bondage in our minds, oh God. In the name of Jesus, this season we will be free, oh God. Free to worship your God. Free to lift up our hands, oh God. Free to magnify your God. Free to honor you, oh God. For you are the big and mighty God. In the name of Jesus, for it's your anointing, God. Your anointing in this season, oh God. Your anointing for us to walk out, oh God. To trust you, oh God. It is your anointing, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is your anointing, oh God. Your anointing to be able to speak to your people, oh God. For it's your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Your anointing to sing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Your anointing to open us to the doors, oh God. Your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. For your people, oh God. For it's your anointing, oh God, that's going to change our attitude, oh God. It is your anointing, oh God. Your anointing that destroy everything that's not of you, oh God. It is your anointing in this season, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your anointing, your anointing, your anointing in this place, oh God. Your anointing, oh God. Not our ability, oh God, but it's your anointing, oh God. It is your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. It is your anointing how to treat your people, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. For is it going to be your anointing, God, that shows us the love, oh God. It is your anointing that's going to unify us, oh God. It is your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Not our ability or what people have, God, but it's your anointing that's going to bring us closer, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it is your anointing that's going to take us out on the battlefield, oh God. It is your anointing that's stand up against the devil, oh God. In the name of Jesus, it is your anointing in this season, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is your anointing, oh God. That's going to bind up the enemy, oh God. It is your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. It is your anointing that's going to live in our homes, oh God. It is your anointing that's going to take over, oh God. Take over, our oh God, in the, in the name of Jesus. It is your anointing that's going to take over our bodies, oh God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Because on tonight, God, we present our bodies a living sacrifice, oh God, holy and acceptable unto you, God, which is our reasonable service, oh God. It is your anointing, oh God. You said, God, the battle's already won, oh God. For you said, God, the battle's already won because you are Alpha and Omega in the name of Jesus. You are the beginning and you are the end. And we got trust in you. You are the beginning and the end. The battle is already won in the name of Jesus. But he want to see us stand up and fight. It is your anointing, oh God. It is your anointing, oh God, that's going to bring forth the gifts, oh God, in this place, oh God. It is your anointing, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. It is your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For the month of January, it is your anointing, hallelujah, Jesus, that's going to break forth even through this fast, in the name of Jesus. It is your anointing. It is your anointing, Jesus. It is your anointing. Now that it is, have your way, God, is your anointing, Jesus. It is your anointing, God. It is your anointing that's going to stop the plan, oh God, in the name of Jesus. It is your anointing, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. No longer will we patty cake with the devil because it is your anointing, God, in the name of Jesus. We won't allow the devil to come into the circle in the name of Jesus. For it's your anointing, God, in the name of Jesus. 
It is your anointing, O oh God. For this is the house of prayer, God. For this is your house of prayer, God. Not ours, God, but it's your house, O oh God. Because your anointing, O oh God, will destroy the yokes of the bondage of the enemy that tries to come through those doors, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. That tried to come up in the people of God in the name of Jesus. Even when they step foot in the house of worship, O oh God, the anointing will destroy the yokes of the bondage of the enemy in the name of Jesus. The enemy can't have his way in the name of Jesus. For the anointing is in this place. For the anointing is in this atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. For we bring God's anointing with us. We're not going to wait until we get here. We will bring the anointing with us. Hallelujah, Jesus. When, people, when the enemy is in our presence, he will have to flee. For it is the anointing. The anointing of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your anointing, God. It is your anointing, Jesus. It is your anointing, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your anointing, God. It is your anointing, O oh God, that will make your people, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that are called by your name, God, that will come out, O oh God, and pray as a family, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. It is your anointing, O oh God. It is your anointing that's going to bind up the spirit of laziness, O oh God. Your anointing, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is your anointed Jesus, your anointing, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is your anointing. It's, it is your anointing, God, that's in our minds, oh God. No longer will we be tormented, oh God. No longer will we be on the battlefield with the enemy. For your anointing, oh God, will destroy the enemy. And I did just say He already said it in the name of Jesus. For he's Alpha and Omega. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's letting us know it's already been done. But we got to trust in his anointing. In the name of Jesus. Trust and believe. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's already done. In the name of Jesus. It's already done. In the name of Jesus. Don't you hear him? The, en the enemy don't have an, an beginning or an end in the name of Jesus. His end is already defeated. For, but our father has it already has the beginning and the end. He has in the name of Jesus. He's already defeated the enemy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We need to trust God at his word in the name of Jesus. Trust him at his word in the name of Jesus. Everything we need is in the word of God. In the name of Jesus. His anointing is already. His anointing. His anointing is already. His anointing already has destroyed the enemy. Hallelujah, Jesus. 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 Lord, we bow down before you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We welcome your presence in this place, O oh God. Your consuming fire is here, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
for the anointed one is here in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, sweet and smelly Savior, oh God, on tonight. We thank you for your fragrance, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for coming and see about us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, for the anointing, oh God. The anointing is in the room. The anointing is flowing. In the name of Jesus, oh God. This anointing is flowing. His anointing is flowing, oh God. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus, Lord. God, teach us to war in the spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we're walking in a new season in you, Lord, Lord God, teach us to war in the spirit, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, tonight, God, let your spirit move like never before, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, tonight, arrest any and everything that's not like you tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. God, tonight, destroy yokes tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Destroy yokes of bondage tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. God, touch the mind of the believer tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Loose the shackles off of the mind of the believer tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Break every yoke, God, in the name of Jesus. God, touch us in our minds tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Free us tonight in the mind, God. In the name of Jesus, free us tonight in our thoughts tonight, God. In the name of Jesus, free us tonight, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And God, give us a clear understanding of you in this season, God. In the name of Jesus, clear understanding of you, God. In the name of Jesus, nothing less, Lord. But we want all of you in this season, God. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. God put flesh to death in this season, God. We want to walk according to your will, God. In the name of Jesus, walk according to your will and your purpose for our lives, God. In the name of Jesus, God, whatever it is that you have for us in this season, God, let us get it now. In the name of Jesus, move every distraction out of the way that tries to block us from destiny in the name of Jesus God we're going to reach you in this season in the name of Jesus more of you in this season God in the name of Jesus God we realize that we can't do nothing without you in this season in the name of Jesus God we ask that you will expose sin in the name of Jesus expose sin God in the name of Jesus and Lord God give us the tools to deal with sin according to your word in the name of Jesus no longer shall we hide sin but we shall expose sin and we shall deal with sin in this season in the name of Jesus we cannot operate in sin no longer in this season in the name of Jesus no more more sugar on sin in the name of Jesus we will not hinder your people in the name of Jesus no longer hinder your people because of sin in the name of Jesus but we will walk up 
upright according to your will, your purpose in the name of Jesus. Satan, you get back now in the name of Jesus. And we send you back to the pits of hell tonight in the name of Jesus. You will have no reign in our lives. You will have no victory in our life. You will have no victory in our lives. You will have no power in our lives in this season. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We will walk with authority in the name of Jesus. We will operate in power in the name of Jesus. No longer in flesh, but we shall operate in power in the name of Jesus. We will walk in power in the name of Jesus. We will walk in victory in the name of Jesus. No longer victims, but we shall be victors in the name of Jesus. We will have a celebration season in the name of Jesus. No longer depressed. Hey, in the name of Jesus. No longer depressed in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of depression now in the name of Jesus. No longer walking out on God. Not in this season. In the name of Jesus. We're not going to throw in the towel this season. In the name of Jesus. We're not going to give up in this season. In the name of Jesus. For the word of God tells us that we are more than conquerors. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are the healed people of God. God, you said by your strength, we are healed. And God, we believe by your stripes. Just what your word says. We are healed. In the name of Jesus, every stripe, we are healed by every stripe. Hey, we are the healed people of God. And God, hey, this season, we're going to believe your report, God. We're going to believe every word that you said about us. We're going to believe it in the name of Jesus. We're going to believe it in the name of Jesus. And we receive it, God, in the name of Jesus. Every word that you said about us. Every word, Jesus, that you said about us, God, we're going to believe it in the name of Jesus. 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 God, go into every home, God. Every home represented in this room tonight. God, go into our homes, God. And God, you clean house. In the name of Jesus. God, you line it up. In the name of Jesus. Line up our homes tonight. In the name of Jesus. God, touch our husbands tonight. In the name of Jesus, touch the wives tonight, God. In the name of Jesus, touch the children tonight, God. In the name of Jesus, everybody's got to line up. Everybody's got to line up. Line up tonight. In the name of Jesus, line up tonight. In the name of Jesus, no longer the same. In the name of Jesus, we shall walk on one accord in the name of Jesus. We've been in that same condition for too long. God, let us line up tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holiness in the name of Jesus. Holiness in the name of Jesus. Teach us to be holy, Jesus. Jesus. Teach us to live holy, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, holy God. In the name of Jesus, teach us to live right according to you, Jesus. In the name of, whoo, in the name of Jesus. In the name of 
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, let your consuming fire fill the house tonight, God. In the name of Jesus. Your consuming fire fill the house tonight, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, let there be a change in our homes, God. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a change in the name of Jesus. Teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Teach us to pray, God, in the name of Jesus. For it is the power of prayer. It's the power of prayer that changes things. God, teach us to get on our knees and pray, God. Teach us to open up our mouths and tell you thank you. Teach us to war in the name of Jesus. Teach us to war in the name of Jesus. Teach us to fight the good fight of faith in the name of Jesus. 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 For we know that when we call you your name demons tremble at your name and we're tired of the devil playing with our minds so tonight jesus we call your name jesus 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 do it jesus do it, Jesus. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Not just for me, but do it for my neighbor. Do it for my neighbor. Do it for my neighbor. Do it, Jesus. Lord, we're calling on you tonight. We're calling on you tonight. We're calling on you tonight to work it out tonight, Jesus. Work it out, Jesus. Work it out, Jesus. Work it out, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, hey, Jesus, hey, hallelujah, 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 Jesus, 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 we know you can lift up the heavyweight, Jesus, Jesus, we know that you can fix it, any problem, Jesus, you can work it out, we know that you can work it out, we know that you can work it out, we're pulling down strongholds, and we're casting down imagination, in the name of Jesus, everything that tries to exalt itself above you, we bind it now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, shut the mouth of the enemy, in the name of Jesus, devil you a liar, we shall be victorious, devil you are a liar, we shall be healed, devil you are a liar, we will, we will, we will see the salvation of the Lord, devil hey, you are a liar, my children shall be delivered, devil you are a liar my husband shall be free devil you are a liar my wife shall be delivered in the name of jesus 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 hey jesus jesus Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Jesus, Jesus, sold me blessing. Jesus, sold me deliverance. Jesus, 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 hey, Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hey, Jesus, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Huh? Fix it, Jesus. Huh? Work it out, Jesus. Huh? Oh, yes, Jesus. Huh? Oh, yes, Jesus. Huh? Only you can do it, Jesus. Huh? Only you can do it, Jesus. Huh? Only you can do it, Jesus. Huh? Jesus, 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 move and touch our leader tonight, Jesus, move and touch our leader tonight, Jesus, only you can do it, Jesus, Jesus, touch the man of God tonight, God, touch him in his mind tonight, Lord, touch him in his spirit tonight, God, God, send the healing tonight, in the name of Jesus, send the healing tonight, Jesus, Jesus, I lift him up where he's weak in the name of Jesus. God, hold his hands up in the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight, fill him the more with your spirit. God, tonight, fill him the more with your anointing. God, tonight, touch him like never before in the name of Jesus. God, speak a word to his heart tonight in the name of Jesus so that he may be able to deliver a sound word tonight uh, to your people uh, in the name of Jesus uh, and we bind every distraction tonight uh, in the name of Jesus uh, every stumbling block uh, that tries to get in the way of your word tonight uh, we bind it now uh, in the name of Jesus 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 Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, you are a wonder, Jesus, you are a wonder, Jesus, you are a wonder, hey, hallelujah, Jesus, tonight, mid hearts tonight, God, in the name of Jesus, God, fix broke hearts tonight, in the name of Jesus, fix tonight, God, fix tonight, God, fix tonight, God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, restore unto us our joy, God, in the name of Jesus, restore joy back to your people, in the name of Jesus, God, give us joy again, in the name of Jesus, we once had joy, but we lost it along the way, but oh God, tonight, restore back joy unto your people tonight, God, in the name of Jesus, God, bring us back to you tonight, in the name of Jesus, God, give us a hunger for for ministry again, in the name of Jesus, give us a hunger to serve you the more, in the name of Jesus, God, give us a hunger for ministry to serve, in the name of Jesus, God, give us a hunger, the first hallelujah to serve you the more God in the name of Jesus 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 God give us the strength tonight to continue to stand on the battlefield in the name of Jesus give us the strength tonight to stand firm tonight in the name of Jesus with courage and with power and with wisdom tonight God not man's wisdom but your wisdom God in the name of Jesus God teach us to use our spiritual weapons use them in the proper way in the name of Jesus we don't want to misuse our weapons but we want to use them according to your will and according to your instructions on how you would have us to use our spiritual weapons in the name of Jesus. We don't want to abuse the gifts and talents that you've given us, God. But Lord God, 
God, we want to use them, hey, to edify your kingdom. We want to use them properly, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, let us hear clear instructions through this fast, God. In the name of Jesus, clear direction. In the name of Jesus, clear instructions and clear direction, God. In the name of Jesus, but most of all, God, let us be obedient. Let us be obedient when you speak. It may not be what we want to hear, but Lord God, let us be obedient. Whatever you said for us to do, God, let us obey. In the name of Jesus, teach us to be obedient servants. Teach us to be obedient leaders. Teach us to be obedient. In the name of Jesus, obedient followers in the name of Jesus. So, God, whatever you're saying in this season, God, let us open up our ears and let us obey in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 God, you're shifting us around in the season. You're shifting us around, God, in this season. Nothing as usual, God. Nothing as usual, God. Nothing as usual, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you're moving us out of our comfort zones. You're moving us out of our comfort zones. You're moving us out of our comfort zones. And God, tonight we say it's okay. We accept it on tonight, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, for we desire to do your will, God. No longer our will, Lord, but your will. Hey, hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we will give you the glory. Jesus. And we will give you all the honor in the praise. Hallelujah. For it is through your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion. Put your hands together and bless them tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, Jesus. Sovereign God and King. Sovereign God and King. You are good, Lord. And your mercy endures forever, Jesus. Hey, you are a good God. Hallelujah. You're good, Jesus. You're good, Jesus. And there's no one like you nowhere. There's no one like you nowhere, Jesus. Nobody takes good care of us like you can. Nobody can love us like you can. Hey, nobody. Hey. It's nobody like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We magnify and we lift you up, Jesus. Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. Hallelujah. You've been faithful, Lord. And we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. There was none like you. There was none like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. 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 
Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We honor your name, Jesus. You are a merciful God. Hallelujah. You are a merciful God. Bless your name, Jesus. You are a merciful God, Jesus. The angels bow down before you, Jesus. Heaven and earth adore you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. You are a mighty God. You are a mighty God. You are a mighty God. Oh, yes, you are, Jesus. You are a mighty God. You are a mighty God, Jesus. There's none like you nowhere. Nobody like you nowhere, Jesus. You fight every battle for us, Jesus. There's none like you nowhere. And we magnify you, Jesus. You are a promise-keeping God. You keep every promise. You've never failed us, Jesus. And you never will, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you, Jesus. 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 You protected us, Jesus. Even when we didn't want to be protected, uh, you protected us, Jesus. Uh, you healed our bodies, Jesus. Uh, even when we didn't deserve it, Jesus. Uh, you were yet still faithful. Uh, thank you for being a faithful God. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for regulating our minds, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. When we should have lost our minds, Jesus. Lord, you stepped in, Jesus. You stepped in, Jesus. You made a way out of no way, Jesus. And Lord, we tell you thank you. 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 Oh, Lord, we tell you thank you, Jesus. We tell you thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Merciful Jesus. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Jesus. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Jesus. Sickness should have took us out, Jesus. Hey, but Lord God, you reminded sickness uh, that by your stripes uh, we are healed. Uh, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hey. Oh, thank you. Hey. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hey. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, hey, thank you, hey, Jesus, hey, oh, thank you, Lord, it could have been me, Jesus, hey, oh, thank you, hey, oh, thank you, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, hey, thank you, hey, thank you, Lord, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Well, you might as well tell them thank you while you're here. Come on, Zion. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Yes. Thank you. Hey. 
Hallelujah. You've been good. Hey. Thank you. You've been good. Yeah. Hey. You've been good. Thank you. You've been good. Hey. You've been good. You've been good. Hey. Thank you. You've been good. Hey. You've been good. Hey. You've been good. Hallelujah. You've been good. Hey. You've been good. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Hey, yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Thank you, Lord. You've been good. Hey. You've been good. Yes, you have, Lord. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. Hey. You've been good. Yes, Lord. Hey. Yes, Lord. Come on, help me, Zion. Hey. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord, have your way. <laughs> have your way. Hallelujah. Have your way. Uh, have your way. Ooh. Have your way. Come on, bless him, bless him in the house. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Hey. Oh, yes, Lord. Hey. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Ah, you've been merciful, God. Yeah. Hey, Jesus. You've been merciful, God. Yeah. Hey, your mercies are new every morning. Yeah. Hey. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hey. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hey. Oh, thank you. Hey. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are a great God. Hallelujah. Hey. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. 
Woo! Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together and bless him. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless him, bless him. Bless him, bless him. Hey! Hallelujah. I wonder if there's anybody grateful on tonight. Hey! I wonder if there's anybody grateful on tonight. Hallelujah. Are there any grateful people in the house in this room tonight? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I've been having an experience all day long. Hallelujah. God has been too good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Yeah. I never forget what you've done for me, Jesus. Yeah. I never forget Jesus. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. Yeah, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Jesus. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody, just slip your hands up in the air and let's just worship God in the house. If God has been good to anybody, come on, just open your mouth and just worship the Lord in the house. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's make a sound of worship in the house tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we adore you, God, for there's nobody greater than you, God. God, we honor you, God, and we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus, God, we worship you. God, we honor and we adore you doesn't matter who's here and who's not here, God, but because we're here, we worship you. And God, tonight we say we love you more than anything. Lord God, we say we love you more than anything tonight. God, we honor you. And we bless you. So we worship you, God. God, we magnify you. God, we make you greater. We make you bigger, God, for you are greater, for you are greater. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Come on, help us out and lift your voice. Say, I lift my hands. my hands. In total adoration unto you, you reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone, because of you my cloudy days are gone, I can sing to you. I just want to say say that I love you more than anything. And if this is your testimony tonight, come on, lift your hands and help us sing it all over the building. We just say, I love you, Jesus. 
I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yes, say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, that's it, worshipers. Say, I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything, more than anything, more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell just you, want to tell you, Lord, I love, Lord, I love you more, more than anything, more than anything. Yes, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore I you. Worship and I just want to tell you, want to tell from the bottom of my heart, Lord, Lord I, love I love you more, I love you more, I love you more, yes, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, for making a way out of no way, I worship you. I just want to tell just you, tell Lord, you. I love Lord, you. I love you more, more, more. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell just you, tell Lord, I love you more, Lord, I love you more than anything, God. Yes, God, Lord, I love you more than anything, God. Anything, God, Lord, I love you more than anything. You got your testimony tonight, if you want to say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than more anything. Than anything. Yes, Lord, I love. To Calvary to save a wretch like you and me, that's love. Hey, that's love. Come on, just say that right there. Jesus went, Jesus went to Calvary, to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me.
you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just wants to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Now, somebody lift your voice in the house. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name, bless your name, bless your name, Jesus. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, if you love him tonight, come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you on tonight. It's an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do me a favor. Just get up and hug somebody that you didn't come with. Just say, I'm glad to see you. If they look mean, don't hug them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they look mean, don't hug them. Hallelujah. I don't want that mean demon jumping off on you. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, if you're glad to be in 2017, give the Lord some praise right there. Hallelujah. I'm excited about uh, what the Lord is going to do uh, in 2017. Uh, Brother Richard, I don't have a whole lot of wind, uh, so uh, you're going to have to, yeah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do uh, this year. And, uh, whoo! <laughs> I want those of you that have a prayer life uh, to begin to, to pray for every uh, spirit of resistance uh, that's in this ministry. Uh, every proud spirit. Uh, oh God. Uh, every spirit of, of manipulation. Hallelujah. That we send that mess back to the pits of hell from whence it came. Uh, uh, and this one ain't biblical, but it's according to Dr. Davis. Uh, you pray for every terrorist spirit. Let me explain that. A terrorist is somebody that would hold a position and know uh, God didn't already told you to give it up. Hallelujah. Or just know that your sin is up there, uh, but you're too proud to, proud to let it go. And sometimes you got to know the seasons of God. Uh, it's not that. God don't want to use you. It's just that God wants to use you somewhere else. And sometimes you need to move areas uh, to be able to, to prosper. Uh, I'll never forget it, and I'm sure she don't mind me sharing that uh, there came a time when I needed to move uh, our lead intercessor. And uh, at the time, she had built 
the intercessory team uh, from birth. Uh, and you know when you start something, you want to finish it, praise the Lord. And I didn't give her no notice, no nothing, because I, I knew uh, she might go scratching and crawling. Uh, but we made the, the, the move, and God... <laughs> And God tremendously blessed her and the area that she moved to. And so we're grateful to God. Sometimes you just got to be willing uh, to move. And flesh, flesh sometimes uh, will become so emotional uh, that you're not able to hear the spirit of God. Uh, God deals in emotions uh, because he healed uh, David. Uh, if you're ever going through an emotional uproar, I challenge you to read the Psalms that David wrote. Uh, he didn't write them all, so you'd have to do a little research, praise the Lord. Uh, but he wrote several Psalms, uh, and you'll note that David at that particular time was lightweight schizophrenic. Uh, but God healed his emotions and healed his mind. And then David pins through the Holy Ghost. Um, portions of the Psalms, uh, which gives us direction on how to get out of that. And uh, God will heal your emotions. He will heal your mind. Uh, he'll bring you out of schizophrenia, paranoia, uh, abnormal personality. Listen, uh, God don't want to stay like that. Uh, but we got to seek him to come out of it. Hallelujah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. There's several of us that have dealt with things like that. I, I dealt with just a high level of lack of trust. And God has to heal my mind uh, for me to be able to launch forward. And it took some time. Uh, but the book of Psalms was able to deal with that anyway. That, that was for free. Uh, we're going back tonight into the power and purpose uh, of the anointing. Uh, I'm not going to ask you. Uh, did Sunday bless you? I'm not going to ask you that because uh, I'm not too sure I wanted it to bless you uh, more than I wanted it to challenge you uh, and to uh, to cut some of you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, because the word of God ought to be able to pierce uh, down both bone and marrow and cut down to the very heart and intent of man. And a lot of times in our minds, we have an intention, uh, but uh, because of where we come from, what we do on a daily basis, uh, our intentions can be on autopilot. In other words, we think we go in one direction, but really we're not. Uh, we're going somewhere else. And God has to bring you in alignment uh, in your mind, your body, and in your soul. For you to be able to be in alignment with anything else. I ask God, why is it, God, that it's difficult sometimes for people to get in alignment? And he said, because they, their selves are not aligned. Uh, you'll get that in a minute. Uh, and I, I said, what do you mean? He said, their mind is one way. Their soul, body is going another way. Their spirit is going somewhere else. And so when you have your mind against your spirit, and your body, uh, you got a house that's divided against itself. <laughs> and some of us ain't double minded, we triple minded. Because your body want to do something, your soul want to do something, your soul, which is your intellect, your emotion, and your will, and then your spirit, where the God of the devil dwells, wants to do something else. And so because you're made up of three parts, sometimes you're divided within yourself. And when you're unbalanced and not in alignment, you can't align with nothing else. And so sometimes you feel like you don't know which way you're going. Uh, it's because of your tripartite or your three-part being, which was created in the image of God, is all going different ways. And so that is one of the reasons why we were fasting today. Is because in order to get in alignment with God, you got to align yourself. And all of you has to decide that this is the direction that you're going. So some say, what is, the, what is the purpose of fasting? Was to bring your body under subjection. Because your body is going one way. 
bring your mind under subjection because our emotions are all over the place and our will, our will, our wills are jacked up. Uh, because I always say you do what you want to do. And then your spirit, uh, uh, a lot of times, is drained because you don't pray. <laughs> so the mind says, I want more of God. But then the body doesn't communicate that through prayer. So your spirit be dry. <laughs> and so there's no alignment there. And when you don't have any alignment, you don't think you're crazy. And you're going to uh, a lot of times end up uh, struggling uh, with things that come in uh, because you're not aligned properly, so it's easy for things to get in. Uh, Christians uh, shouldn't struggle with depression. Uh, I said Christians. I said Christians uh, shouldn't struggle with depression, but it, it happens uh, because we, we fail to pray, we fail to read, uh, and do the things necessary to stay in alignment. What happens when you're in alignment is it'll try to come on. But because you're in alignment, discernment will recognize what's going on and, and begin to deal with that before it overtakes you. What am I saying? There's no sin in being tempted. So it can come up on you. But when it comes, you got to deal with it so that it does not overtake you. Because once it overtakes you, uh, then it throws you all the way out of alignment. And then it takes someone else or God to help bring you back in alignment when you can deal with it yourself. So uh, bringing ourselves into alignment understands the power and the purpose of, of the anointing. So uh, let's jump back uh, into Sunday because I, I dealt with so much uh, on Sunday. If I can get uh, someone to help me tonight or a few people, uh, if somebody can get uh, Isaiah 10, Isaiah 10, verse 27. Uh, someone else get Luke 4 and 18. And we'll, we'll begin working. Yeah, I'm ready. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of what? So let's, first of all, talk about the purpose. One of the purpose of the anointing is to break yokes. Uh, look at somebody and say, break yokes. So how uh, can a person be anointed if no yokes are being broke? <laughs> that young man sure is anointed, but no yokes are breaking. That young man sure can sing, but no yokes are breaking. A yoke, again, is something that we would put around an animal's neck uh, so that they could drag different equipment uh, to be able to do farming. Uh, yokes, yokes, uh, yokes, burdens, uh, weight, uh, something that causes you uh, to function slower or to function uh, with a disadvantage. Uh, so uh, what yokes uh, have come on your life uh, that have caused you not to be able to operate in optimum performance. Uh, whether those yokes are uh, sins or whether those yokes are emotions. Uh, because sometimes a yoke is not just uh, a sin. Uh, sometimes a yoke is emotion. Uh, in other words, uh, people have done things to you and you won't give them. Uh, it creates a yoke. 
uh, because it causes you to not operate in optimum performance. Uh, and because you won't forgive, of course, the Bible says you can have no forgiveness. It slows up your whole life. Uh, yokes, yokes, yokes. Uh, you didn't have the greatest relationship with your parents when you were coming up. And so now that yoke is upon you. Uh, and you don't know how to function uh, even with your own children. Uh, yokes, yokes. I don't know what your yoke was. Uh, but whatever the case, God's anointing breaks yokes. It frees you uh, from those yokes of bondage. Uh, that cause your life to get out of alignment, uh, to get out of place. And so the whole purpose and power uh, of the gospel and the anointing of God is to break those yokes so that you can be free. And without yokes coming off your life, you remain the same. And here is one of the problems uh, that we never understood about the church is we come to church and we have service but I would always ask the question, who's getting saved? Who's getting delivered? Who's getting set free? Who's being encouraged? Who's, who's having weight lifted off of them? A yoke, another yoke could simply be uh, a yoke of lack of faith. In other words, you don't trust, so you don't take the leap of faith to jump out and do something that God is calling you to do. And so that yoke is holding you back. We always look at yokes as sin, but not necessarily sin, uh, but yokes that are causing you not to live in, in the total life that God has designed for you. Fear is a yoke. Fear is a yoke. There's all kinds. Anxiety is a yoke. The thought of your past is a yoke. All these things will grip you so that you don't go where God would have you to be. And so when we come to church, it's not just to hear good music. It's not just to hear a good word. What's the point of that? There are plenty of great speakers. But are they breaking the yokes over your life? And so when you come to the house of God, one of the first things that you ought to desire is that God break the yokes known and unknown. Uh, some of the yokes I know, some of the yokes I don't know. Sometimes I don't know why I function the way that I do. But God can break those yokes, lift those weights, so that I'm able to step out and do what he's called me to do. And so Sunday I, I went on a little tangent uh, about uh, the difference between gift and anointing. Uh, we talked a little bit about how gifts are without repentance. In other words, you have those gifts when you were born. Uh, those gifts were upon you. You could sing before you came to God. Uh, even preachers, we could talk before we came to God. Uh, many of you know my testimony. I could sell you a bag of hot air and tell you why you need it. Praise the Lord. Uh, because I had the gift of gab even when I was little. It was a gift. I sold cupcakes with no icing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In front of my house, lemonade with just a little bit of sugar. And somebody knocked on the door and told my mother, you know your son out here selling cupcakes with no icing? She didn't even know I made the cupcakes, praise the Lord. And I was selling them too. And my mom asked, did you buy them? Yeah, well, he was just so cute, praise the Lord. <laughs> Whatever it takes, hallelujah. I was gifted before I got saved. You were gifted before you got saved. And so you can work your gift without the anointing. Oh, God. And so just because an individual has ability does not necessarily mean that they're anointed. Now, the difference comes in is when somebody sings and a yoke comes off your life. So why are we in praise and worship? To break yokes. To break yokes. Uh, that's why uh, I'm looking at the praise and worship team and, and telling them, start over or tap in. Or, How's your prayer life? Because when you think about it, uh, praise and worship, they're leaders. They're leaders. They're ushering us into the presence of God, into the anointing of God for the purpose of breaking yokes. Right? 
And so why do we encourage uh, congregational participation? It's because we're not trying to entertain you. We're trying to get you into the presence of God so yokes could come off your life. Hallelujah. And so we try to encourage you to participate so that you can come out of where you are and go into a new place in God. I think one of the challenges is, is that we expect people uh, to do church without understanding why we do it. And so you come in, and a lot of us, we're used to being entertained because we were entertained before we got saved. How many of y'all got a favorite worldly song right now? Don't be bashful. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Because if we went to your car right now, <laughs> it might be thumping. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Let, let, me, let me help everybody. How many of you got a favorite worldly song from the past? From the past. Oh, now everybody want to raise your hand. Devil. We still got that song. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and we're used to being entertained uh, by things like that. And so it's hard when we come into the church to separate entertainment from anointing. Entertainment doesn't do anything but move you emotionally temporarily. The anointing moves you forever and changes things forever. And so the power and purpose of the anointing, first of all, is to break yokes. You can't maintain something that you don't need. <laughs> Some of us are trying to maintain things that need to be out of our lives. How, what do you mean? Some of y'all maintain your, your, your meanness. It's a defense mechanism. And you maintain it by making excuse of I've been hurt. And because you've been hurt, it gives you the excuse to be me. Did, did you catch that? And that's a yoke that needs to be broke off of you. But the only way to deal with me is to deal with the yoke that caused you to be me. It's going to come right back because you choose to maintain it. Niceness will come upon you. Because when you're not in pain, sooner or later you're going to smile. I was, I was hungry, and it was hard to smile. But as soon as I ate, <laughs> I started smiling again. <laughs> because the hunger pain was gone. <laughs> there was a yoke that was broke off of me. <laughs> God gave us the anointing to deal with things known and unknown. Uh, let us go uh, quickly uh, to St. Luke, chapter 4, verse 18, if somebody could read that for us. All right, so let's deal with this. The Spirit of the Lord had anointed me. Uh, he is upon me because he had anointed me, uh, number two, to preach. So uh, the 
only way that you can preach, uh, unless you're preaching on gift, is that yokes be broke off of you. So what am I saying? Can people preach and still be bound? Absolutely. I feel my heart coming now. Hallelujah. Can, can people preach and still be bound? Absolutely. I don't want anybody in here to be deceived or to be fooled uh, by gifted preachers who are not anointed. Uh, they can sing. They can holler. Uh, uh, they know the church cliches. Uh, it's a performance for them. They can move you emotionally, uh, but no yokes are being broken. Uh, <laughs> you can even have an emotional overload and pass out. And a lot of people think that's the anointing. It's not. How many of y'all watched it? What was that movie? The Five Heartbeats? Y'all, y'all, okay, all right, all right. Uh, y'all remember that scene? He jumped off the stage and started hollering. And she smooth passed out, didn't she? I've seen it happen, hallelujah. Uh, uh, people see stars and pass out. Uh, I've seen it, I've seen it. I think it was the second year we were uh, in Memphis when we used to go to Memphis and uh, somebody saw uh, Karen Clark and, and just fainted. And they was over there fanning them and Karen on. I want to go over there and say, get up. <laughs> You're doing too much. You can uh, preach and move crowds and be in bondage. So I don't want anybody to be deceived to think that just because somebody is preaching and it looks like people are getting delivered, that is because of the vessel. It's not always because of the vessel. But Sunday I made it very clear that the Bible declares that God said that his word, his word, would never return unto him void. So if his word is being proclaimed, even though the vessel is dirty, God has an obligation to his word to fulfill his word. So many a times we mistake the vessel for being anointed when God is just being faithful. Oh, it's tough tonight. It's tough tonight. It's tough tonight. Uh, uh, I think one of the things that we need to do is not so much focus on the vessel as much as we focus on the word. Because many of us need to be delivered from personality preaching. In other words, uh, I could say something uh, and you not receive it, uh, but one big TV evangelist say it, and I see posting it on Facebook. <laughs> and, and, and put the name of the person that preached. I preached last week. But not that I want credit, because I really don't. You don't never put my name up. Uh, if you want to do anything for me, get totally free. Hallelujah. Just get free. Uh, but many of us are personality driven. Uh, facts about it. Uh, we'll support certain programs when certain personalities are going uh, because we enjoy that personality or whatever the case may be. When you love the word of God, you can get the word of God out of anything. I knew I wasn't going to get a whole lot of help right there. Me and my wife went to a Russian service. We did not understand a word that they were saying. But when we walked in, we felt the presence of the Lord because we know God. See, when, when God is in you, you know when he's present. And his, his anointing was present in that service. And we sat there. And I, I told I said, wow, I feel the power of God. My wife's hand went up. Then we heard one universal word, hallelujah. Because you can't translate that in other languages. And when they said hallelujah, my hands went up. The presence of the Lord was there. When God is in you. Even if you don't understand the language, whoo, God, you can feel the presence of the anointing. There were yokes being broken. 
they were ministering in another language. We didn't know uh, the personalities that were there, but we knew the presence of God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel or the good news to the poor. Uh, he hath sent me to heal uh, the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. So let's set this up. Let me uh, probably upset a few people. Uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, uh, to have concerts and conferences. Uh, uh, isn't that what it say? <laughs> because the point of it is, is, what is the point of all that if nobody is receiving sight? Hearts fixed, getting free, wounds being healed. What, what is the point? What is the point? What is the point? And so we have to get the universal church back in alignment uh, because the universal church has stepped out so far that all they want is entertainment. Don't nobody really want to be free. And it, it's proven by conversations that are happening online every day. Because when you talk about somebody getting free, that's different. Or you talk about something that's wrong, everybody's in an uproar. I'm not going to get into what's going on online right now. Hallelujah. I'm just saying what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And when you talk about something that's wrong, all of a sudden we're being judgmental. Why are we being judgmental? We're being judgmental because people want to stay in their sins and still have the entertainment of the church. They want to be comfortable in church. They want to be able to come to church and not be bothered about the things that they need to be delivered from. And so if we say anything about what an individual is dealing with, all of a sudden now we're not showing the love of Christ. But the last time, see, the thing about me that's a little bit different is I read my Bible. And my Bible says that when Jesus came, he came to set mother against father. He, he didn't come necessarily to bring peace, but a sword. That's the word of God. And so it's going to cut. It's going to disrupt. It's going to make people upset. When Jesus came, uh, they were upset with him. Uh, because everything that he said looked like it was against the government and against the national religion at that time. They, they not only tried to kill Jesus, but took his life. And so what makes us any different now that we're thousand years later, what's the difference? We have to try to be politically correct so that we don't offend people. How do you get delivered without being offended? It wasn't until somebody told you that you had a stanky attitude that you start looking at your attitude. It was that challenge. And you got mad. I ain't got no attitude. I'm nice. No, you, you're nice. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you not nice. You, you're nice. And when somebody called you on it, you got offended. But it was the offense that made you go back and start looking at your life. The Bible said that we ought to provoke you to holiness. How do you provoke somebody? You got to poke at them. How do you poke at them? Through the word of God. Right? And so uh, the comment is made, oh, don't beat people up with the word of God. I don't know what else it's going to do. <laughs> I know. I know. I still love you. Hallelujah. But the word of God ought to provoke you in such a way that it makes you think and causes you to want to change. Amen. It was the word of God that got into my mind that made me start looking at myself. Hallelujah. I, I remember uh, probably about the fifth or the sixth year uh, that I had been married and I'm preaching and, and I'm preaching and, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, me and my wife would have a little hustle. And uh, she would call me on some of my sermons. 
and ooh, it would mess with me. It would mess with me. And we'd be, we'd be arguing. And she's like, all right, Pastor Davis. Uh, That would provoke me. <laughs> but what it did was it made me take a look at myself. And what am I saying? How am I saying it? Uh, what is the tone that I'm saying it in? <laughs> uh, I, I probably shouldn't use this reference, uh, but y'all know what movie it came from. Uh, put your hands on your head and watch the tone. <laughs> Some of you that are movie watchers know that movie. Hallelujah. It provoked me to take a look at my life. Then I began to pray a little bit different. Because I saw some yokes that needed to be broke. I'm preaching, but I still had yokes. Oh, God. I'm preaching, but I still had yokes. What am I saying? Uh, just because you take on a position or a role don't mean that God don't still need to work on you. And I think this will help you uh, because many people fall to wayside when they see individuals who hold positions and titles. Uh, they use that as an excuse uh, and say, I don't do church. That's, that's the new thing. Uh, folks say, I don't do church because uh, everybody in church is crooked. Well, you got that right. <laughs> you, you got that part right. Uh, we are crooked trying to get straight. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know who told you we were straight in the first place. <laughs> We are crooked trying to get straight. We're trying to get to Jesus. That's the whole point. Well, you a preacher. No, no, listen, listen. Uh, even Paul had afflictions. Uh, he asked the Lord three times to move. Nobody really knows what that is. Now, historians give us an idea. But when he had a thorn in the flesh, nobody wrote three-fourths of the New Testament. So he had an issue that he wanted dealt with. And God said, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave there. My grace is sufficient for you that in your weakness, so not only did he have a thorn in the flesh, God is calling it a weakness. The same person that wrote three-fourths of the New Testament had a weakness. In other words, he had a crook. <laughs> he wasn't straight. He, he, he's straight, but y'all know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. He wasn't straight. He had a weakness. You slow tonight, Sam. That, that joke gone. You just, just not laughing. <laughs> Now they're going to be, you better get straight. You better get straight. And so if we understand that all of us have some kind of weakness, we'll start treating each other different. Uh, because we won't have an opportunity to have a judgmental mindset. And when we find each other's weakness, we're not going after the weakness. We're trying to strengthen the weakness. If they will allow us to help them. Because sometimes when folks have weakness, uh, they won't admit it. Uh, they don't want you to touch it. And they don't want you to talk about it. And here is where it takes the anointing of God to give an individual wisdom uh, to be able to deal with it. And an individual not even know it's being handled. 
What do you mean? When I was a little kid, I used to have to go to the doctor and I would get these allergy shots. Anybody ever took them allergy shots? They are not of God. I promise you. And I had to take like seven of them uh, every other Tuesday. And uh, if you knew me, uh, I ain't like needles. Uh, so when I saw the nurse coming, I started crying. Uh, you didn't even have to stick me. She came in the room holding them. Back then they had the big alcohol wipes too. A big old thing. You rip it open, the whole room smelled like alcohol. And she would rip that thing open. They would always put the needles on the bed next to you. I almost like to pass out. Uh, but uh, what would happen is my mother would turn my head uh, and tell me to start counting down backwards and promise me happy meal. And we start talking, and you know I got hit. Hallelujah. Uh, and they would go down the line. It would distract me uh, long enough uh, to be able to get those shots. Uh, and I'd be mad afterwards because uh, my arm would be sore. Praise the Lord. Uh, but they were trying to get my allergies under control. Uh, what, what am I saying? In order to get better, sometimes it hurts. Oh, God. Now, here poses, I, I'm getting ready to go somewhere here. Here poses a real problem for me. Because I know sometimes in order to get better, it hurts. And then people have the audacity. Not all, but some have the audacity to call the hurt that's helping you church hurt. Let me say that again. Some people call the hurt that's helping you church hurt. Um, because uh, in order to help you, uh, again, he may have to provoke you um, to be able to make a decision that you won't make on your own. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, uh, there are several individuals uh, that I've dealt with uh, since 1998. When we started this ministry, um, that I would walk up to them and try to hug them and uh, just wasn't able to really give an authentic hug uh, because of how they've been handled in their life. Uh, and so uh, whatever the reservation in the mind is, is this hug genuine? Uh, is this person have an ulterior motive? Uh, are they going to hug me too long? Are they trying to fill me up? Uh, just all kinds of thoughts enter into an individual's mind. And so in 1999, after I had experienced that for a year of pastoring, I asked the Lord, teach me uh, how to give an anointed hug. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Because... Uh, 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 I want a person to feel God and not the, the uh, 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 intentions of the flesh. I want them to feel God. Uh, and I don't want them to, to get a missed message about anything. Hallelujah. So whatever it is in my posture and, and the way I present the hug in my conversation, or whatever it is, God, let the hug be anointed uh, so that hugs can break yokes. Now, y'all see all the time, every time I come in here, uh, whether it's Sunday morning, whether it's Thursday, I'm trying to get y'all to hug each other uh, because uh, you never know what hug is going to break the yoke of the next person. But now I want you to pray the same thing, God. Allow my hugs to be anointed. Now, some of y'all hugs is terrible. <laughs> the, matter of fact, let, let's stand up real quick. Y'all don't have to like me. I'm your pastor. I'm your pastor. I'm your pastor. You don't have to like me. Hallelujah. I just want you to be obedient. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just stand up real quick. Hallelujah. All right. All right, wherever you are, if you're on the end, close to the end, I want you to move out into the aisle and take five steps. Come on, move out into the aisle, take five steps. Hallelujah. There you go. 
There you go. Now, hug the person close to you with a real hug. Look at this. Look at this. Hallelujah. Look at that. <laughs> All right. All right, right where you are, right where you are. Let's let's take a poll. Raise your hand if you feel like you got a genuine hug. Look, she threatened folks. <laughs> All right, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. I heard Suzette get threatened. <laughs> hmm. If you're writing tonight, I want you to write this down. There's power in being genuine. There's power and being genuine. My God. It takes so long for it to be recognized. Absolutely. And, and it's because uh, they haven't experienced uh, genuine love or, or been able to receive genuine love. And so when, when it's authentic, it takes a while because people have to have to recognize right uh, and if it's a yoke uh, it's like the story of the elephant that was tied up when it was a baby elephant by a string and now that they're a grown and it bounds them even if that little elephant can break that string because it's been bound so long, it's gotten used to being bound. So uh, it's the same thing with individuals that have these guards and yokes. Uh, people try to love on them, but they've been messed up so long that it's hard for them to break away from what they really know. But the thing about the anointing is it never gives up. It never quits. So you just keep, you just keep going. Uh, I'm not going to name no names, but it was folks in this ministry uh, that uh, would love to give me that half hug. I make them straighten up, hallelujah, and, give me, and I just keep going in, praise the Lord, until they figure out uh, that it's genuine. And I tell you in a heartbeat, I don't want you. I ain't coming for you. I love my wife. Whatever it takes to get into your head to make you realize that I'm not one of them jack leg preachers. I'm not trying to sleep with my members. I'm trying to break a yoke off your life. And one yoke is being able to receive genuine love from God and God's people. It, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. And, and we got we to gotta keep going at it. I think one of the things is that some of us are not mature enough to be rejected. Oh, some of us are not mature enough to be rejected. And so when we get rejected, it hurts our feelings. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is how much do you want to help an individual? Do you want to help an individual or do you want acceptance? You accept me after you realize I'm trying to help you. It's not going to be the other way around. Once you realize I'm trying to help you, then you'll accept me. But if I'm looking for acceptance before I help you, it's not going to happen because you don't know my intention. But when you figure out my intention is to help you, then you accept me. Are, are you with me? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not looking for acceptance. I just want to help you. Now, you're probably going to have to say that 50 more times before an individual gets it 
uh, because they want to make sure that your intentions are right. Amen. I'm telling you how to work the anointing. When you start dealing with others, hallelujah, your intentions have to be pure. Your intentions have to be pure. Your heart has to be pure. You can't be looking for a come up. You can't be looking uh, for something back. Uh, God had to del deliver me quick. I say hello to people. They don't say hello back. I I'm not worried about that uh, because God didn't call me for acceptance. He called me to break yokes. And so while I'm saying hello, you don't have to say hello back. I'm probably going to keep talking to you. Matter of fact, you don't say hello back means I got to go to work. How was your day? Oh, praise the Lord. All right. All right. Father, touch him. You know, I'm, I'm going in uh, because I'm not looking for the acceptance of me. I'm trying to help you and break the yoke. And it pays to be nice to people. Oh, I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. It pays to be nice to people. And when you be nice to people, things begin to happen. Yokes begin to break. Things begin to come off of individuals' lives. And this is where God can begin to move. Uh, let me pause. Are, are there any questions thus far? Because there was uh, a couple of hands that I saw go up. And while I was talking, you probably forgot what it was. Hallelujah. I would say that the anointing can be attractive to those that want a life change uh, versus those that want to be entertained. They're not looking for anointing. They're looking for gift, right? So let's talk, let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, I have a difficult time going to concerts. For a number of reasons. Uh, I go uh, when I want to support people or whatever, but it's very difficult for me to go. Uh, and when I do go, I hear comments like, she killed it. Killed what? <laughs> what did she get? all the yokes that she could have is walking out the door. So for me, that was a place of entertainment because no yokes were broken. It's encouraging. It's something to do. But at the same time, if I'm telling you I'm the pastor and I know it's still yokes on my life that God is dealing with. Then even in the midst of being entertained and encouraged, I'm looking for a minute to be broke on my life. Because if you're meant to be ministry, like if you say to your Some people sometimes feel when the anointing is charging the atmosphere and things like that. I can feel it, but it can be working and you not know it. Um, but at some point, that spirit will bear the spirit will bear witness with your spirit, right? And God will tell you, I'm working here, right? So watch when when your spirit bears with
right? Touch and agree, bear witness with each other, right? Uh, because a person that has no maturity in God uh, needs to see something. And they can see and hook up with an individual. And now this individual is going to do what the Bible tells them to do and disciple them, right? Uh, discipling them uh, is connecting them, uh, taking them from one place to the next. So let's say that the anointing of God was working at your job and uh, you end up ministering to an individual. Well, the discipling that God wants you to do now is connect them to a Bible-based church. You move them from one place to the next, right? Uh, say this with me. God wants me. Oh, uh, y'all ain't talking. Uh, God wants me to move people. Yes. Yes, a lot of times we, we want to go right to the bang, right? Uh, so the anointing of God moves. We're not going to be happy to say pass out. I don't want you to pass out. I want you to stay very conscious. Hallelujah, because I need you to get the word of God in you, right? Uh, but in most cases, we look for people to pass out or to speak in tongues or, you know, something uh, that we can see spiritually tangible. Uh, but moving people has to do with getting their minds changed. And most of the time, we're dealing with people that won't come into the house of God. So we think it's a small thing to get people from where they are into the house of God when it's rather large. Because that was a yoke that just got broke. Yoke caused them not to come into the house of God. I ain't going to church. Everybody crooked. Right? Well... We just brought another crooked person in. But it was a yoke that was broken because now they're in the house of God. So sometimes uh, it'll be working and you won't know it. But at some point, I believe uh, Holy Ghost filled believers touch that that spirit agrees. The Holy Ghost says, I'm working. It bears witness of itself. And then you come in through the wisdom and God begins to use you with something that they can see and touch and connect with. Does that make sense? All right. Questions, come on. I don't even know what time it is. Come on, find a watch. Because I'll go off. I, I feel good tonight. Hallelujah. It's 814. All right. No more questions? All right. I got another scripture. All right, then let's go. Matthew 10th chapter. Tenth chapter, we're going to start with the first verse. Yeah, yeah, come on. You got it? I'm going to do a read-on preacher, so just start reading. Oh, you can't. All right. Come on, Sister Moody. Okay, hold it right there. And when he called, when he did what? Somebody said call. I want you to know that he called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look at somebody and say, God called me. He called you out. He called you out. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you had a vision or not. He called you out. Some of y'all want to be too deep. You could have just been sitting at home, and you, you had an unction say, I need to go back to church. Guess what? That was his call. He sent the Holy Ghost to convict your mind. Man, I got to get it right. I got to get back in church. I need to get my family in church. I want you to know that was the Holy Ghost that visited you and convicted you and made your mind decide it was time for you to come back to church. Or come to church. Because some of them ain't coming back. It's our first time. Whatever the case may be. The Holy Ghost did that. God was at work. And so some of us, I don't feel God. I don't hear God. I don't see God. He got you here. He moved you. 
So when he called his disciples, he gave them power against what? Unclean spirits. So if you don't have power, what's the power for? <laughs> the power ain't to be recognized. The power is not so people can serve you. The power is not so folks will call your name. The power is to deal with unclean spirits. Now let's deal with unclean spirits just for a minute. What is an unclean spirit? It is anything that tries to come and overpower your mind and your thoughts to get you to do something that's not like God. It will drive at your flesh, at your mind, to get you to do things. And so when my mind starts tripping, first of all, I try to see if it's one of my lusts, one of my desires. I say, okay, I'll deal with that first. And I start binding those demons, whatever it is. Because I want those unclean spirits away from me. We wrestle not against what? We bring our flesh under subjection. But those thoughts have to come from somewhere. If we wrestle not against flesh and blood, hallelujah, then what is it that we're dealing with? Here is where the believer doesn't want to be honest. Oh, that's just my issue. Yeah, but that issue is ignited by a demon that keeps coming and jabbing at you in your mind. Get you to think about it so that you can think that it's your idea and that you possess that idea and that the idea belongs to you. So he's deceiving you from day one to get you to believe that's your struggle. <laughs> now you got to understand the Bible. Watch this. It says when you're drawn away. What is drawn? Another word for led. Another word for persuaded. So who's drawing you? <laughs> we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we're drawn away by our own lusts and desires. So we're not fighting against ourselves, and we're not drawn by ourselves. When we're drawn, we're drawn away by our own, so they utilize our own lusts and desires. They draw us by our own lusts and desires, but something has to be drawing them. It's a spirit that utilizes your lusts and desires to draw you away, to pull you away from God. But what we don't want to be honest and, and, and say is that these demons and spirits are dealing with us. And that's one of the reasons why we can't get delivered from them. And folks say, I ain't got no, no lust demon. I'm just promiscuous. <laughs> I, I've heard it all. I promise you, I've heard it all. I just, I just, you know, started doing my thing when I was young. So now I have a, a, a strong sexual appetite. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is that you have a desire which is not always negative. The lust, which is negative. That's why I said lust and desire. Because let me say this. Let me, let me help some of you. Um, uh, why would you want to be delivered from something that God ordained? Huh? Huh? Yeah. It, it, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> no, I'm trying to help somebody in here. Because you gotta see what you're dealing with so you can win. You ask him, Lord, <laughs> deliver me, deliver me. But God created you in such a way. When he said it's not good for man to be alone, he found a woman, etc. I'm not gonna get too deep into that. Uh, but then he said, be fruitful and multiply. How do you be fruitful and multiply? Uh, Y'all going to freeze up on me. Is he talking about sex? 
God ordained it. I don't want you to get uncomfortable. God ordained it. And because he ordained it, it is a natural desire. Ooh, it's getting rough. And so now when the Bible says you're drawn away by your own lust and desire, it is a natural desire. So how do you get delivered from a natural desire? You don't. You don't. You got to deal with the spirit that's trying to draw you away. Because if you deal with the spirit that's trying to draw you away, then you have the ability to bring your body under subjection because God said you could. That's why the Bible says, I, I know I'm messing with some folk because it's super quiet in here right now. Uh, that's why the Bible says uh, that, that we're to cast down imagination uh, because imagination stimulates lust and desire. And once you begin to start imagining things, uh, you have what's called intellect, emotion, action. The intellect is the imagining. You can see yourself doing it. Once you can see yourself doing it, it taps into your emotions and your body begins to agree with your mind. And once that happens, you have action, right? So that's why the Bible says casting down imagination and bringing every thought into the obedience of Christ, into the will of God, uh, pulling down strongholds. And so what it's telling us to do is that when we start imagining, we need to go grab that thought and pull it down and get it out of our system. Because when you pull that thing down, then it does not have the ability to cause you to do something that you don't want to do. <sighs> Strongholds are things that grip you in such a way that you think that you don't have any control. Now, you say you have an issue because you allow the imagination through thought to develop in an emotion when now the emotion is there, you think you can't control it, and you got satisfied. But if you grab the thought according to the word of God, cast down the imagination. In other words, when I always say there's no sin in being tempted, it is the enemy who's trying to draw you by your own lust and desire that threw the thought in your mind in the first place. All he can do is plant seeds. So he planted a seed of a thought of something that you like to try to draw you away. And when he plants the seed, now what you do is you go and grab that seed and say, this is my issue. It's your issue because it's a, it's a desire. It's not your issue. It's a desire. And the desire is there, but the desire has to be functioned in under the will of God. So until, until that time, you have to bring those thoughts under subjection. Now, it makes it worse when you have stepped out of the will of God. I'm really about to cut up here. I, I felt to get cold again. Hallelujah. It makes it worse when you already have stepped out of the will of God. And you already have your own built-in images. Because, you know, the eyes, the ears, and all the senses, those are portholes to your soul. And so now uh, all these things are triggered that the enemy uses uh, to try to stimulate thought and to create a stronghold. So what happens is now the seed comes. And the seed could come not just from a, something you see. It could be from something you smell. I'm trying to teach you how to guard your heart, how to guard your salvation. 
because you can smell something and it'll trigger a thought. And you have to bring that thing under subjection. You don't have no control over me. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And some folks say, oh, you've been too deep. No, I'm telling you how I got delivered. I'm telling you how I got free. And certain triggers would happen and I would have to bind it right away because I didn't want the thought to start going to my imagination. And now I start imagining and I can't get away from it. Because my imagination now uh, stimulated my emotions. And my emotions now stimulated my body. And now my body wants to satisfy the desire of the thought that had been brought in my mind that was carried by a spirit. I want you to know that there are spirits that are assigned to you. I don't want you to get, think that you're so special that you don't have demons assigned to you. When you were born, the devil signed them up to your life. It is his job to destroy you. Why would you think that he doesn't have strategic demons that are coming after you according to your own lusts and desires? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He wants to make sure that you're totally wiped out. And he's going to do that by any cost. And so what we have to do, number one, is know our desires, know our weaknesses, so that when a seed is planted, we deal with it as soon as it comes in our mind. I'm not saying it gets easier or it gets easy, but it does get easier. Because once you learn to identify it, you'll start to deal with it right away. The power and the purpose of the anointing is not just for external use. It's for internal use. In other words, uh, before I can really project an anointing on somebody else, I need to utilize the anointing on my own life. One of the reasons I believe that God has allowed me to be effective is because I've concentrated on so many yokes in my life. And so I utilize that experience of the yoke-breaking anointing off of my life and project it through the word of God to you. So it may not be the same thing, but I know that God has the ability to do it through the word of God because I've been delivered from something similar. I talk about mean folks all the time because I used to be mean. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. I had to get deli delivered from levels of meanness, levels of anger. I thought I was delivered. Next thing you know, it was another level. I'm like, whew, this one's deep. Hallelujah. I didn't even know this one was there. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I thank God I was delivered from flashing. Ooh-wee. I, I was fast on another level, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I didn't even know it was a yoke. I thought it was normal. See, y'all ain't hearing me there. Uh, because of my upbringing, places that I've been, people that I've been around, thought it was normal. But it wasn't normal. That's not what God wanted. But we have to see it. And through uh, challenges and struggles, it was identified, and then once I identified it, I know it as a trigger. So now, when the enemy tries to drop that seed, I know how to deal with it so I don't flash. Process, process, process. Hallelujah. I didn't get to half the scripture that I wanted to deal with, but let me hurry because we got to quit. Uh, he gave them power against, somebody say, unclean spirits. Power against unclean spirits. To cast them out. To do what? We got to get them out. Out of yourself first. And then out of other people. I'm going to say this. Don't try to cast the devil out of somebody else. And you ain't cast him out your own mind. How are you going to lay hands on somebody else? You don't even know if it worked. 
Stop praying for me and you ain't prayed the devil out of you. The Lord's got a word for you. Okay, cool. But has he given one for you? Because most of the time what I preach is a word that the Lord gave to me. And once I get it, then I can preach it with conviction and not just knowledge. Because knowledge is a gift. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And I don't want to just operate in gift just because I have the knowledge or the revelation, right? The revelation is great, but did the revelation break a yoke in my life? And how do I know you're free if I don't know what freedom looks like on the revelation that God gave me? Cast the devil out of your own life and to heal all manner of sickness. Now, here's the thing. God has given me the gift of healing. All right. Has it worked on you? And I'm not just talking about physically sick, but some of us have other kinds of sickness. That's why it says all manner of sickness. All manner of sickness. Some of us are sick in our emotions. Help us, Holy Ghost. All manner of sickness and all manner of disease. It's all kinds. Then he gives the names. I'm going to have to uh, probably stop right there. Uh, but I, I want you to skip down to verse 5. He said, these 12 disciples, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter not. I uh, gave him specific instructions. Specific. So the anointing is for specific things with specific instructions. Somebody say specific things with specific instructions. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And when you get there, and as ye go, and as ye do what? Preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I got to stop there because I, I need to deal with this kingdom just for about two minutes and, and then we'll get out of there. Uh, the kingdom of heaven uh, is dealing with uh, the rule of God, the reign of God in one's personal life. In other words, uh, trying to uh, reposition the individual uh, to understand that the true alignment with God is in the kingdom. Kingdoms have rule. Kingdoms have authority. Kingdoms have establishment. Kingdoms have a way of doing things. And most people don't want to come out of the kingdom of darkness because there are things in the kingdom of darkness that they like doing. A lot of people don't want to come under, they want to come out of the kingdom of darkness, but don't want to be under authority. So they want to be delivered, but they don't want to be under authority. They want to be free. And enjoy freedom, but not participate in government. So my question in closing tonight is how can you enjoy the freedom and not participate in government? The governing of the freedom. You want the freedom, but you don't want to participate in the governing of the freedom. So just give me the freedom without all the rules. Give me the freedom, but I don't want to guard the freedom. I just want I just want the freedom. In order to guard the freedom, you have to come under authority. In order to come up under authority, you have to give up rulership. If you really want Christ in your life, the only way that you're gonna get to the fullness of Christ is if you get off the throne. You gotta get off the throne. I always pray for arrogant people because I know that Jesus ain't all the way on the throne. They still fighting for the seat. You ever see two kids fighting over a seat? That's what immature believers look like. Because they won't give up the seat and allow Jesus to reign. 
I got to quit. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise tonight. Come on, you could do better than that. Hallelujah. Uh, many of you uh, like to go back and to hear some of this and to take notes. Uh, after every service, about two hours after service, uh, you can go back to our YouTube channel uh, and you can watch them uh, over as many times as you want. Uh, I'm having to go back and look at Sunday even again uh, because there are many things that God wanted me to preach, but we ran out of time. Hallelujah. Thank you for those of you that have been praying for me. Bible study is over. I, I could breathe better. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm happy about that. Hallelujah. I don't know what this is, but we're going to defeat it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to defeat it. Uh, all right. The ushers are coming. Uh, while the ushers are coming, I need uh, four or five people uh, to stand up and tell me one take home uh, that you'll be taking home tonight. If you need an envelope, lift your hands. Uh, but let me get that four or five individuals uh, that want to share uh, one take home uh, that you'll be taking home on tonight. Hallelujah. Don't jump up like popcorn. Yes. God been calling, but you didn't answer. All right. Yes. Yes. Yes, he just don't put the anointing out there. Uh, it's for instructors. Yes. There's power in being genuine. Wow. All right. Y'all talk to me. Hallelujah. I need a few more folks. Wow. I love it. The gift will make you happy. But that's about it. Yes, the word and the anointing will provoke you to change. Yes. In order to get better, it hurts. It hurts. Hallelujah. It hurts. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, uh, fasting helps you get better. But it sure do hurt. <laughs> it hurt me today. <laughs> Hallelujah. For those of you that don't know, uh, for the month of January, we're fasting every Thursday, uh, Wednesday night at midnight to 5 o'clock on Thursday. And I don't know about you, uh, but 502, I was having a cup of coffee. <laughs> yes, God. <laughs> I couldn't wait. Anybody else? Come on, give me a couple more. Take homes, take homes before we raise offering. Take homes. Yes, my on tonight. I'm not looking for acceptance. I just want to help you. I saw a hand here. You know what that does? That get that that reassures your confidence in God. Because a lot of times we lose our confidence in God because of the vessel. But regardless of the vessel, God's word shall never return unto him void. That thing is powerful. Bring yourself in alignment with God. Isn't that interesting how, how the body, the soul, and the spirit can all be going different ways. And we just be messed up. That is amazing. Come on, any more? Yes. The anointing never quits. You could try to run from God. You can go to the Bermuda Triangle. He will find you. He said, I'm glad you had a safe flight, but here I am. Here I am. <laughs> right. Right. Because some people think they're anointed for everybody else. And you can't do nothing for yourself. You can lay the slave and go home a devil. And lay hands on everybody. Folk got delivered, and you get home, and you just full of them. Hallelujah. Two more, and I'm going to raise the offering. Yes. 
your spirit is dry because we don't pray. And I, I, I hope more folk get that. Church was dry today. No, you was dry. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you'd have filled your well before you got here, we might have better service. <laughs> One more. Yes. 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 All right. We're standing. We're standing. Hallelujah. 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 I want to pray for those who are really dedicated to getting better in 2017. Yeah, I want to. I want to pray for you. Uh, uh, some people just want to stay the course that they're on, uh, but I want to pray for those that want to get better. Because uh, I want to get better. I want to get better. I want to perfect what God uh, has called me to do and anointed me to do. Uh, and not just in church. I want to be a, a better husband, a better father. Uh, not that I'm shabby, hallelujah. But I want to be better. I want to be better. I want to be better. Father, tonight I, I thank you, first of all, for your word. God, that you... Give us a mind to digest your word in a way that will provoke us to change. And not just come to say we had church. Uh, but we came that our life might be impacted and changed. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And I feel your presence. And you will not still the seed that had been planted tonight. And you will not plant negative seeds. To try to distract the word of God and distract progress. We will be better. We send you back to the pits of hell from whence you came. You have no power and no authority in this house and over your people. Over God's people. So God have your way in our lives, our minds, our bodies, and our souls. God give us a mind to hear your word. To be moved by your word. To instruct our families. To spend time in devotion and prayer. Let us fill our wells, God. Through prayer and devotion. That when you speak, we'll know your voice. When you tell us to go, we'll know to go. When you tell us to sit still, we'll know to sit still. Because we know it's your voice. 2017, God. I, I speak it now. I prophesy into the atmosphere. God, not cars, not houses, not promotions. God, but better, better. I believe better will bring all that because we're able to handle it. So God, bring your kingdom, bring your rule, bring your authority in our lives. Cause us to be in alignment with you, God. Woo! Cause us to be in alignment with you, God. God, that we might be delivered, that yokes might come off our lives. And God will be able to handle the blessings that you have for us because the yokes won't hold us back. God, I claim the victory over your people right now. Now, God, bless these gifts that we're about to give to you. Bless the time. Bless the offering. Bless the seed that's getting ready to be sown. And God, we hold you accountable to your word. You said that you would give seed to the sower. So we're sowing tonight, God. And we're holding you accountable that seed will be scattered everywhere. That things will begin to spring up that we didn't even expect. God, I claim it now. 2017 will be better. I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Please come.
right. Has everybody given? Come on, for the first time in 17, celebrate your seed as it <laughs> leaves the building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, turn to your neighbor and just say, neighbor, I see better. I see better. God bless you. You are dismissed. Uh, Sister Gwen, if I could see you and district missionary for two seconds. Two seconds.